Okay, uh, now we're gonna show the principle of how we discover binary stars. One of the ways we do that is called eclipsing binaries. And we use the fact that uh, when a, uh, one star uh, comes in front of the other or goes behind the other, it's called a transit. That means the, then the intensity of the brightness coming from the stars is gonna vary as a function of time. So we have the computer here set up again. We have the Explorer GLX. We have the light sensor, and we have a, a big light bulb that is gonna be really bright. And it's gonna be uh, analogous to a big star that's bright and very luminous. Then we have another uh, light bulb that's less bright, and it's gonna be going around the star, the bright star. When the dimmer star, let's show you here, it, this one is a dimmer star, and this one is a brighter star. When the dimmer star comes in front of the bright star, since it's also smaller, it will cover it up a little bit. So uh, the brightness of the combination of stars should go down a little bit, and then it's gonna go around and come behind this time the bright star will more or less completely cover up the smaller dimmer star and so the brightness should also go down but the, at a different rate. So we'll be able to analyze that on the drop of the intensity. Uh, this is called light curves. We're going to study their light curves as a function of time. This way we can find out their relative size, how big one of them is versus the other and we could also find out their relative brightness. So let's get this uh, started here. We'll have uh, press this on uh, start. And right now the instrument is reading the brightness of just the bright light bulb here. And we will uh, put this so that it's measuring its brightness. And now we'll put this uh, light bulb next to it and start going around it slowly okay Let's turn them off. You can see here, if I uh, zoom in here, this is, this is what astronomers do all of the time. You can see the intensity of the system this is a 900, it kind of varies, then it comes back, it comes down sharply, goes out, then goes back to normal, and then it comes back down, goes back. So what's happening is that every time one of them is being blocked by the other one, the intensity of the system is going down. I want to add something to this uh, binary star light curve demo. When we were doing the taping, I forgot to mention that uh, this here is the beginning of the eclipsing of the big light bulb by the small light bulb. So you could see the small light bulb is starting from this corner coming in front of the big light bulb. So that would be like a small star starting to eclipse the big star. The sharp peak here is when the small light bulb is right in the middle of the uh, big light bulb and then the front edge of the small light bulb is starting to come out and the eclipse is beginning to end. So by the time it reaches here, the small light bulb is completely out. Then it comes around and now the small light bulb is falling behind and is being eclipsed by the big light bulb. But because the small light bulb is much dimmer, the, sh the drop in the intensity is not as much and it lasts a little longer here. 
because it goes through the big light bulb it takes a while because it is smaller and then it comes out then the small light bulbs uh, the small light bulb comes in front of the big light bulb again and it continues so this way we can kind of see one drop is not as much as the other and then one drop also lasts a longer that means this is the smaller star and this is the bigger star being eclipsed by the smaller star so you could see that you could do very detailed calculations and analysis of the binary star system with this method thank you now the other kind of use of this could be this I'm going to actually delete this one now. This time, let's say that there's a planet going around the star. There's a planet going around the star known as an extrasolar planet or exoplanet. So we want to discover that planet. Is there a way of discovering that planet? Well, one way is because the planet is going to be going around the star. You're barely going to be able to see the planet. You, you won't be able to see it with the modern day telescopes. But because of the gravitational attraction of the planet and the star with each other, the star will wobble. So just basically go back and forth, go back and forth a little bit. And by measuring the motion of the star as a function of time we can discover how heavy that planet is and where is the planet compared to the star if, if it's a really big heavy planet then the wobble of the star will be more and we'll be able to see that so let's just hit the start button again and all i'm going to do is just basically wobble it go back and forth go back and forth Go back and forth. Okay, imagine there's a planet going around the star. This technique is known as astrometry. Astrometry, and we could use this to discover planets going around stars. So now let's stop. Stop. And you can definitely see very clear pattern here. Now, this time, it's a sharp curves. Uh, the, the points here are sharp. There's not, there's not a certain period of time during which the eclipse is taking place. Because this one is not an eclipsing type of situation. It's just that, that the star is getting, uh, it's wobbling its motion. So you can see here the intensity of the light goes up when the light comes close to the sensor. The intensity of the light drops when the light goes away from the sensor. So it goes up and down and up and down and up and down in a very clear pattern. If it's a very heavy planet, this means that the planet is pretty heavy because it actually changed quite a bit. Now, on top of that, what if the planet is actually eclipsing the star? So let's delete that. Okay, click. Okay, so I'll use just my finger as an analogy. Imagine my finger is a little planet, and now I'm just gonna go around, okay? So besides causing it to uh, wobble, I'm actually gonna be eclipsing it a little bit. Okay, so. And you can see that also This one, really, I don't even need to zoom in on. You can see it very clearly here that once in a while, the intensity drops, then goes back up. Intensity drops, goes back up. Intensity drops, goes back up, depending whether my finger is in front of the star or behind the star. So you could definitely see a pattern there. Then that's the way that we could discover the extrasolar planet. So you could see here that the study of light curves and light intensity is an excellent way of studying both binary stars and extrasolar planets. Thank you.